Hello and welcome to Bump Love Dad Edition. Always exciting to have the dads in the house. And joining us today is Dr. Eric Lugada. He's a medical epidemiologist and senior public health physician. He's a husband and father. We also have Ronald Sesanga. He's an energy consultant, business person, and he's also involved in food processing in Malawi. He has raised nine beautiful daughters. He also lives in the USA and Malawi. We have Andrew Chamagero, our celeb. He's a media, media personality. He's a news anchor on NTV and also known as Omuntua Wansi. We have Ronnie Habasa, a team building coach, media personality. He's an MC a husband and a father. Nice to have you gentlemen, fathers on the show today. And we are talking bride price. What your thoughts are on bride price? And my first question would be, what was the original purpose of bride price? And how has that evolved over the years? Bride price is a customary instrument that is used to justify a marriage. It was, and it still is, an official custom that expresses the love of a husband for his, for his wife. It was used, you pay lots of cults so you wouldn't go back. Although we still don't lose the honor bit of bride price. It's an honor and not a payment. Now, the practice of exchanging money or goods for a bride evolved in Uganda over time and remains common in our country. And over time, it has been commercialized. commercialized. The, the issue of bride price has, has been highly commercialized. A modest marriage in our country's ceremony could cost or could cost a, a potential husband from somewhere between seven million, which is two thousand dollars, to almost fifty thousand, close to two hundred million. So that that has been the problem that has evolved over time. And recently, in some circles, the country's highest court ruled that parts of the practice is unconstitutional, which paved the way for greater protection of women. Uh, maybe I can just pick it up from there, Doctor. Uh, thank you so much. I think you give a good um, introduction to, to what it is. And I like what you said, you know, there's no price that you can put, a price tag that you can put to, to a lady, you know. Uh, I, I know you've given out one, one daughter before. I'm sure there was no price you could put to that. And uh, no. Ronnie over here is, is our kafulu with nine daughters. I, if he was to put a price, he'd be a rich man. <laughs> the one price I think came in uh, a little later when we started to commercialize it and put a monetary value to it. Um, but originally, like doctor has said, the purpose was simply to cement the relationship between, uh, you know, the two communities or the two families that were coming together and uh, not so much to buy the girl. All right. And there was never any monetary value. There was no money that was exchanged. Um, then there was properties and gifts that were given uh, for the Bachiga. Mostly it was cows and goats. And uh, there were reasons why uh, they gave these particular animals, you know. Uh, one of them, the culture states that, you know, you're taking a girl who is alive, she has blood, she's walking, and you needed to give something that was also alive, you know. And so a cow which has blood and can move was to symbolize, you know, it was uh, like an exchange of life, you know. And... Um, when you looked at the cow, the cow was symbolic of many things. It could give you milk, it could give you meat, it could give you clothes. You know, the hide was used for clothes. Uh, the hooves were used for buttons. Um, and even in the olden days, blood vessels were used as like a string to, to stitch and so So it was a whole package. And it's only of late, you know, in the last uh, couple of, you know, generations where it's become a bit commercialized. And uh, uh, so the, the original purpose was sort of fading away. Hence the name Bride Price. Otherwise, it was originally bridal gift or token or appreciation. Uh, yeah, I'll stop at that for now just to give you a perspective from our side. I don't know what Sesanga thinks. Uh, my thoughts about it, uh, if I talk from the Kiganda aspect would be to defy anything bright price. But if we go worldwide, there are places where it's not just the, the women who are being uh, 
given a price. In India, it's the men who are given a price. And in India, for anyone to marry off a daughter, they start saving from the day she's born. So uh, the, 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 the family sometimes do infant side just to limit the amount of daughters they would have because of the amount of money they would have to pay for them to get married. But that aside, uh, Ronnie, where would the Bakiga keep the cows in those hills? So maybe it was goats and stuff like that. It wasn't necessarily the cows. I think that was an import from, from the Nilohamitic races that came to infiltrate that region, who came with cattle. And then it became adapted by the Bachiga because I one time led a, 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 a Kusawa entourage. It was for a, 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 a brother of mine adapted from the Ateso going to, to get a, a Mchiga girl in a family in Entebbe. And uh, I was negotiating the bride price and they wanted so many cows. And I said, you guys, in Entebbe, you can't keep the cows. In Tigezi, you don't have the place the cows can graze. Where are you going to take this cow except the market? Why don't you just ask us to bring the cash and you eat the cash? So it wasn't, at any point, I think, it wasn't just bringing a warm-blooded animal. It was still a price to buy someone's daughter. I think it was commercialized even then as it is commercialized today. Even the Baganda who didn't do it, I find people sneaking in a lot of things. People want house furniture and people want televisions and, and cookers. And I'm thinking, that's and not Baganda. Is that is bastardizing a culture, you know? But the way it worked, I guess it was a good thing to bond the two families and probably to tell the girl, you can't just run away from this man because your family will have to cough back this much value or wealth they've brought in for you. I think we have a lot in common, the ones in Central and those in the East. Um, I, for one, I was requested a bride price of 30 cows. And you know, it didn't make sense to me. Like uh, Mr. Sesanga said, I, I told my father-in-law, look at my age and look at what you're asking for and compare my hustle with what you're asking for. And he was very blunt. He said, if you can't afford them, then you're not ready to marry. As a Mganda man, um, a bride price, like Mr. Sesanga eloquently put it, it was meant to appreciate the parents. And I was talking to my great um, judge, Temanju, and he told me that his bride price, it was five kilos of meat. Five kilos of meat and sugar and salt. That's all he took. But his word was the bride price, the commitment that he was going to be with uh, my judge, like the commitment he gave. And our family then gave the commitment to stand with him in case he absconds from the commitment. And so his word became the bride price. The little things he took, it was just the appreciation the commandery kind of relationship. And over the years, like Sesanga says, some things have started to sneak in, cookers, fridges, and <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. It's more like a business. Ideally, it should be you proving your commitment on the other side. But the fact that you just don't go, if, if you've noticed of late, it's not the father who makes the decision of the bride price. There is a team of elders who will sit and they'll say, depending on what Chiamageru does and his stature, we, we just can't shoot below the bill. That is Habasa coming, my friend. So the elders will advise, depending on the society gratification of a person, which is wrong. It is this kind of um, team of elders or the committee that has exorbitantly made the list so big and in so doing, domestic violence has actually risen because when the men on the ground, Jembe Danaba and Tubawansi, they say, Nakusa Sura, I paid you lot of, 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 of cows. So you're going to listen, I'll beat you up. So I think the more we have commercialized the bride price, the more we have given in our daughters, sisters, and mothers to be um, belittled 
from uh, the attitudes and uh, brutally violated and exploited because some fool, I will say some fool will say paid <laughs> and then they deserve to, you know, treat our sisters and mothers the way they want to, which I'm very much against too. I'm a liberal minded Muganda, well-traveled, but I don't believe bride price should be taken away. I think we should be guided back to what were its values, why was it in place? And if we go back to the basics, then we can protect our daughters, our mothers, our sisters, but again, staying within the lane of culture. Oh, wow. Very, very um, um, beautiful sentiments from you, Andrew, and I totally agree, um, especially with the violence. You know, we had, um, we had something on violence a while ago, and one of the reasons, um, uh, oh, yes, Andrew, Eric, you have something to say. Come on. Yes, I do. And, and, and to just add on to what Andrew has said, over time, we, we've, we've misinterpreted the, the essence and the value of bride price. As we said, it's a token of appreciation, bonding two families, strangers. I mean, when you marry a wife, your husband is not your relative, your wife is not your, we are all strangers. You're getting into a strange family. So the token of appreciation to bond these families takes place in that way. And it's not meant to be commercial at all. When I got married, at age 24, my mother-in-law said, my wife is not for sale, just take, just have given, and you just give me a, a token of appreciation. And that was it. And I took only two crates of soda and a goat. I didn't have much at age 24, but I was able to get married. My daughter got married last year, and they came and said, what do you want? What do you give? I, there's that thing which they call the um, omutualo. I said, nothing. My, I was freely given my wife. I freely got my daughter. It's a gift from God. Why should I sell it? I can't sell a gift. It's a gift. All I ask the, the, the husband to be is to look after my daughter well and not ever mistreat her. That was all. No need to pay for a gift which you've been freely given. If I can just chip in there, I'm curious to know if, if Chamagero took 30 cows because hey, uh, <laughs> that was an uphill task, you know. Yeah. Unlike him, uh, on my side, uh, my father-in-law uh, said, just like Dr. Eric put it, said we cannot attach a value to our daughter, you know. And places where I've had them justify the bride price, they say, Omana Asomye, we have taken her to university, she's a beautiful girl, and so they are showing you how much value and how much they have um, you know, put into her uh, prior to your uh, gallivanting around and coming here to take her, you know. Uh, but for me, they said we, we cannot put a price tag to our daughter. And so they said we'll do it. They called it the Christian way. And I remember my dad saying, ah, the Christian way, what do they mean? Is this a, is this a kamasu? Do they, what are they saying? You know, are you sure they are saying we come empty handed? And it was actually a big challenge for us because Sometimes maybe it's easier for someone to tell you five or 10 cows. But when they said, ah, feel free to appreciate the way you want, uh, we'll not put a price. Ah, it even became an uphill task. We had to look what can we bring that has value. And I'm glad because in the end, you know, we, we brought gifts which were very symbolic. I remember uh, my father bringing a portrait of a lion and handing it over to my wife's dad and saying, you know, this represents uh, there has been a lion that has been taking care of this girl. Where she's going, there is now another lion which is going to security guru guru. Everything is going to be okay, you know. And then the others were just the usual appreciation, you know, some some uh, the usual gifts, the sugar, the salt, and you know. But it it was an uphill task when they said, ah, bring what you want, you know. So <laughs> that's that's how it happened for me. But I, mean, Kero, I don't know if you paid those thirty cows or my camera. Abasa, maybe just respond to you. Um, we we are to negotiate my father had to jump in and we negotiated and um, they zero to 20 cows now my father being a muganda man he says Omuchara, whoa, you're going to pay those cows so i had a payment plan i shared with them and i started to pay bit by bit so and this guy didn't want didn't want money he, he wanted cows so every time I would get um, like one cow, I say we're delivering it on Saturday at your farm. He would say, please come the other Saturday. And he was always there with his vet just to make sure my cows don't come with the diseases. And later he explained why um, he could actually take like 20 cows later. He explains that five for my daughter, my first daughter, 
the five, the other five are for my second born, that is Mandela. The third one are for Zaza. Then the other five are for her daughter. So in case I pass on before they stabilize financially, they have um, a launch pad from which they can start life with. So he told me it's, it's not about me, but um, I'm trying to make sure that um, my daughter doesn't become a burden to us and the other relatives in case you pass on. So I told him, now that makes sense. I wish I'd explained it earlier that this is a safe net for, for them in case I die. But boss, I pay. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing, Andrew. That's amazing when you say that. Um, so what do you think has been the impact of commercialization of uh, this bride price? Made young people feel like it's impossible to get married and they don't get into serious, long-lasting relationships. A marriage, in my view, I may differ from others, should start as early as you can so that you grow with your wife, you grow with your children. No, no wife finds you when you're young and just married. You don't have anything. You literally have nothing. You don't even have, you only have your trouser, which probably your father bought for you. And then as you start out in life, you begin to work and build yourself together with your wife. Now, we, when you build yourself together with your wife, it is hard to just wake up and throw her out like a piece of property. And your kids are also born early. So you grow early, you have a better life, you born with your kids. Now my kids, uh, they almost look like me. They make the decisions. I don't make any decisions and life is good. I, I don't have to worry, I got married at 24. So the challenge, the biggest challenge is if, if we make it so expensive for young people to settle down and get married and live responsibly, they will have children outside anywhere with anybody there's no commitment and then they don't get into the family and remember the family is the smallest unit the most critical unit for a nation for living a christian life for everything in life discipline and everything we are in society begins with family so if we prevent our young people from beginning their families early because they can't avoid they can't afford to pay bride price then you end up with corrupt useless irresponsible indisciplined people who have nothing to lose if you have no family you have nothing to lose you would go anywhere in the streets and do anything so the family puts you together and makes you responsible i think um on top of that commercializing um and you know it's one thing to commercialize and over there i said you know people people man have flamboyant you know my, my wife and kids are always watching these wedding shows and they're so flamboyant people are bringing cars and the convoy is as far as the eyes can see and the gifts um my goodness you know, it's just, it's, it's a bit too much. It's really, really too much. And I know um, maybe sometimes they say it's not the boy who is marrying, but it's, it's his family. He has the backing of his family and all of that. Um, but commercializing of bright price really has many detrimental uh, attributes that it brings. One, uh, I think, you know, cohabiting. People are just forced, you know, to go undercover. Uh, as opposed to doing things the right way. And when you go undercover, there is like, like doctor has said, there's a commitment that's just lost, you know? But when you go before parents, they are the, the girl's father hands the daughter. Okay, in my culture, the girl is handed over to your father, you know, say from one parent to another. And in the eyes of everyone, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like the church wedding, you know, they say we are gathered here before witnesses. And that alone puts a certain level of commitment, a certain level of responsibility on the young man's shoulders. But when you make it too commercial and uh, he's going to go undercover, I don't know, uh, is that what you were going to call or something like that? You know, you're, you're doing things behind the scenes. They... Uh, tomorrow she's pregnant, they have a small quarrel. There's no commitment out. He'll, he'll, he'll go for the next. So um, that's certainly one of those. Um, but, but the other one, and maybe Andrew will belabor that point a little bit more, uh, was what he had intimated to. Um, when I buy you, you become my property. You know, when I save up and buy the car of my dreams, the way I handle it, the, the instructions I give, I tell the children, hey, don't put your muddy shoes in my car. You know, wash my car. Hey, it's my car. I handle it with care. You know, now in the same way, sometimes when it's over commercialized and you're pressured, uh, I like Jamagero, whose father I know later on explained to him and he realized that, wow, he had actually worked hard to put a safety net for himself and his children. Uh, on the other flip side, if it's 
commercialize and I struggle, by the time I pay my last coin, you are my property. You will not bring Manyanga in my house. You will not raise your voice at me. You will not, you know. Uh, and so that's really where all this domestic violence comes from. And that's why you have a lot of women's rights groups and, and feminists just, you know, fighting for the abolition of um, right price altogether. But yeah, I'll, I'll let, I'll let uh, Sanga maybe pick it up from there on uh, his thoughts about commercializing right price. Uh, thank you, guys, about uh, the, the opinions you've given and the, the good pro and, and arguments that we've had. Uh, the bride price to me, when you, when you call it price, then it's, 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 it's a, a transaction of some sort, a transaction that, to my mind, goes commercial, not just cultural. But, for example, the, 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 the way the Baganda did it was not actually calling it a, a price, but they, they called it Omtuaro. And Omtuaro, which was the, the actual seal of, 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 of uh, a father giving away his, his daughter, and uh, a father-in-law on the other side, receiving a, 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 a wife for his son what was, what was nothing to do with value. It, 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 it was like the, 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 the Mukago in the Kiganda where people took two berries of coffee and uh, dumped them in their joint blood and each one ate one and they became blood brothers of some sort. So the Mutual in Buganda was basically a, a, a small parcel of uh, uh, dried and uh, uh, termite ants in Swa. And uh, the, the, the other customary gifts that came with it had also had significance, not as in adding value to the people who are receiving them, but of showing how important they were in this new relationship. The first one was the, 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 the Chitacho Mwenge, which meant we've come in peace, we can even share a drink, an alcoholic drink, and we won't be fighting each other. The second one was Nkoko Yomuko. You give me your sister, the chicken I'm giving you is a bond that you shall always be welcome at my dining table. And every time you come, I'll give you another chicken. The third one was Olubugorua Mama. That was, you've looked after this girl from birth to this day. She's being taken away. In recognition of that service, we give you something that is very personal, a cloth you put on your body. That was also a personalization, saying that you, the man who brought up this girl, you the man who is giving us this girl through your son, the Muko. We give you a dress to show how personal it is to you. So these were symbols, not value. They were priceless. And uh, if, if you think about it, they could have been bringing a Rubugo to a Mukomazi, the man who makes him Bugo, probably bought from him. So the bright the gifts for Kwanjula, as it was called in Uganda, were just symbolic. Now, maybe in those cultures where it was Sidi Karamajong, where there were a lot of cows or the Maasai, where the guy had to go and, uh, and hunt a lion or the, 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 some sections of the Banyankole that one had to pick a stone and throw, and as far as the, the stone went, all the cows in, behind the stone would be taken away as bright price. Maybe for them it was not a surprise initially, and it wasn't about value. Maybe it was just also symbols of some sort. But commercialization has been building as we've been progressing through social dynamics. And uh, to a point now that people take it as, as something of a trade, 
you give me so much, I give you my daughter, but you didn't, you didn't bring these people together. Those days they used to bring people together. These days you go to a pub, you find a girl on a Friday, and maybe a year later, you're marrying her. None of your family, none of the people involved in negotiating bread prices ever met, caused that meeting and ultimately the love and the relationship. So I can't say we are going the right direction because we have commercialized the, 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 the symbols. And even those that had a lot of value in the symbols have now also moved away from the, the, from the symbolism to the commercialism of, 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 of the enterprise or the, the culture. So I still believe we may go back to what it was. And if we are going to do that, we may have to really, really change a lot of movement that we are on now. We have to respect that love and marriage are beyond a price. And that price, when we put it on, then it, it, it makes one party a commercial item and of less value. And that's where you end up with all the violence and all the, the you know, the things that are attributed to it. That is my I, contribution. And I, the girls have given up. I totally agree with you.